All right, everybody, welcome to today's program, Fresh Off the Airplane, arriving at Siesta Key Beach. It's Jason, Roll Tide Creole. What's up, Jason? Not, not much. How you doing, Paul? We just, I mean, we literally got here like 10 minutes ago. You haven't, so. you haven't unpacked your suitcase. No. My, my relational and etiquette saying, let the let, let Jason get settled in, you know, unpack. And I said, hey, you want to bang out a podcast? And I was expecting you to say yeah. no. No, I'm good. We we got our uh, walked in. Me and Paul got matching and Toro Brian shirt. Fullerton. And Fullerton. All I mean, you know, we got multiple colors, but we it was green day today, so that's good. Yeah. We literally were wearing the same color t shirt, right? They're all the same color. Yeah. And it said Toro. You can't plan that. I mean, I guess you could plan that, but we didn't. So Jason, I really look forward to catching up with you, my friend. I'm glad you and Tracy could come down here and uh I want to say thank you to everyone who made all of this possible. So how awesome is this house? The the house, is, you know, we came last year and we thought that was pretty awesome. But I'll just be honest, initial impression, this one is significant upgrade over last year. So it's it's definitely. And last year uh, was no uh, slum. I no, mean, this, no. But this one this is. This one is. It's nice. I don't normally have elevators in my homes, but it, I don't mind one if they have it, which <laughs> this one does, so that's nice. And a hot tub and a river to the yeah, pool. that's right. And uh, across the streets, the number one beach in the United States, Siesta Key Beach. So white really? sand and light blue seas. Okay, I'm going to have to go check that out. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe take your wife on a little walk at the sunset. That's a good idea, Paul. And uh, Yes, sir. Hey, thank you to the Launchpreneur Academy and the Hardscape Academy because they sponsored this home. And uh, we appreciate uh, Brian and Liz and Caleb and Brittany for their hospitality to, to give so many of us the time and space to come down here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got, so also thank you to, so we got Naylor over here Instagramming. Hold and, on, uh, I got to Tra get, Tracy needs the card. She needs the credit card. So this we're could having be, dinner uh, at 630, Tracy. This could be bad. Okay. All right. All right. So Rook, Keep the receipt. Rookie, you see we're filming here? So, <laughs> excellent broadcast. Naylor Nay is here. So, yeah. So, oh, this has been a this has been a disastrous intro. I haven't even I haven't even let me let me thank our kickoff tour sponsors here, Naylor. Thanks to our friends at Xmark Kohler Engines and Company Cam for sponsoring uh, this opportunity to be down here uh, kicking this thing off uh, for the year, doing live interviews where you get this kind of. Uh, Fellowship and fun. So, good to see you, Rook. What shirt are you wearing? Oh, you got. <laughs> He's got a Toro shirt on too. Oh man, Brian had it on too. Oh, well, man. part of it to me, I, they just are. They're very. I mean, I like Toro, but I also they're just a very comfortable shirt, you know. So yeah. that's why I wear them a lot. I I wear my. The problem is it shrinks. How do you get it to stop shrinking? Or is my belly getting? Oh, really? Because I feel like mine keeps shrinking or mine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Paul. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, Jason, what are we going to do with Rookie? Yeah. I, you guys can't hear him. He's off there. Tell, yeah, tell him, whenever Jeff. you – this relationship tip for future, you don't don't ever – your future wife, don't tell her that your age, hey, sweetheart, your clothes keep shrinking on you. Don't, okay. don't, you, don't say that. Okay. You got any other tips? That's the main one right now. Okay. I don't want to overload you. So what's going on back at the Creole household with you got four kids? Yeah. Who who babysits them? Or are they just on their own? <laughs> no, yeah, they're on their own. Uh, <laughs> ages, Carson uh, got it. Eleven and to five years old. No, my uh, my my mother in law is keeping them for a couple of days. They, it's actually just easier for them to come to our house and keep them because we got chickens and a dog and cat and all that. So they just. Plus the kids are comfortable there, so they just come. Uh, they take turns. My my mother-in-law keep them for a couple of days, and then my my mom will come over and keep them. So how many chickens y'all have? Right now we have seventeen. Okay. Yeah. And then are you getting um, eggs for your uh, eggs in the morning? Oh yeah, I eat eggs probably six days a week. So what's your favorite way to make them? Uh, over easy, pretty much. I, now, which I way eat, is that? Well, fried. You know, I just I just. Put them in there and so try you, not you to crack, break. You crack the egg in the pan. Yeah, and try not to break the yolk. And then when they start, you know, getting white on on the one side, I'll flip them over just quickly on the other side and then slide them right off on the on the plate. 
Okay, that's I like them a little, easy. little runny. Yeah, you don't want them, you know, cook so so much. Did you pick you, that up at, when you worked at Waffle House? Did I did you? work at Waffle House. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of. Um, no, I mean that's just standard lingo. At least where I'm lived, did you say over easy? People okay. know what that means. Well, I just I know scrambled. I've taught myself that. Yeah. We had a cook-off this morning. It was, uh, Kay Wallman made eggs first, and then Paige Jack <laughs> made eggs second. And so they're both good, in my opinion. Okay. Well, I might get in on that tomorrow. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the test taste tester. Y- you guys all make eggs. Yeah. What's How, the topic today, Paul? I'm, well, I'm ready to be right, aggressive for whatever. <laughs> Fertilizer and weed control, man. Oh, okay. I've been killing weeds uh, a lot lately. Cool. So tell us a little bit about your fertilization and weed control business and, and why you found that pays better than doing lawn mowing. Well, it, it pays better because I was doing both at the same time for a little bit. and I'd do the same yard and, and I would charge them, let's say, you know, $50 to mow the yard. And I'd charge them like $60 to spray the yard and the mowing it took 45 minutes by myself and spraying it took eight minutes, you know, so... It's just uh, a little less wear and tear on your body, and um, you can just do a lot more yards, and you don't by yourself. You know, I mean, I can knock out 20, 25 yards a day um, if they're small and a tight route. You just that's, that's very difficult to do mowing. So and, and everything's pretty much a tight route at this point, right? Yeah, I downsized a couple of years ago, or maybe a year and a half ago, and that and I kind of cleaned up some of the the outer lawns and got it real tight and i I tell you i did and i looking back i didn't realize how inefficient i was until now that i'm i'm running an efficient business and uh you know i cleaned up a lot of stuff so it's it's helped my it's really helped my quality of life i mean so i probably 70 percent of my yards are within like five minutes of my house so so i come home for lunch almost every day and just I can start at 8:30 and be done at like 3:30, and 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 you know because I, it's just so such a tight route. Wow, that's route density, and that that's by your house. How much total uh, properties are you servicing, Jason? I got about 300 right now. So I had about 480, and I downsized about 250, and then I've kind of got back to 300, which is. Honestly, I don't. I'm I'm being real selective on which ones I take on now. I mean, I. I because I, I like having some flexibility in my schedule, so I, I'm okay, you know, taking on 20 or 30 more this year, but I don't want to get 100 more, you know, unless at that point you're going to kind of put pressure on me to hire somebody, and I'm not looking to do that at the moment. So you you found the work-life balance sweet spot, 300 fert and squirt customers running things solo, and you have a efficient setup and everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's not that I couldn't do more. I could definitely do more, but um, – I like having some time off. I'm still doing a lot of things on YouTube and online, you know, so I don't want to just slam myself to where I have no flexibility. And so, you know, I'm okay for the first time in years of having a few weeks off every now and then, and that's been great. Do you do seven or eight apps per year, Jason? I'm doing seven. I've seriously considered going to eight, and a lot of people do. There's absolutely Why? nothing wrong with it. Uh, I just couldn't. I, I, yeah, some of it was like if you do eight apps, you, you you still got twelve months to get eight apps in. Where I had twelve months to do seven, so I mean, some of it was like, am I is it gonna do? Is it gonna be better for the customer? Um, but I, it ultimately came down to I was trying to raise my prices, and I did raise my prices. I didn't want to raise prices and add an additional app. It was like double uh, rate, you know. So yeah. I, when it came down to would I rather do seven prices at a price increase or go from seven to eight with the same price i i, I wanted to do seven um and, and do your customers prices. get a discount if they pay for the whole year up front the seven yeah i really pushed that this year i tried to push uh credit card on file or uh, prepay for the year and i give them a five percent discount so i probably had i'm gonna say 20 percent did um Paid the for price, all seven. for the whole year, and then um, what's the average it, ticket price for seven apps in an average size Alabama neighborhood? Yeah, I've got a lot of small yards, which is is good, but I'm gonna say, you know, three fifty to four hundred bucks or something like is that. Is there a minimum of um, like even if it's a small yard, you're like, I don't, I don't spray for under fifty or forty five or what? What? It's less than that. I mean, I've got some. I got one yard. I think I charge him thirty dollars. Now most of these like little bitty yards, I. I 
I'm like $35 or something like that, it, which is great if you've got a bunch of them. You can't just drive across town for one $35 yard. That doesn't make sense. But, uh, but anyway, I got this one yard. I mean, it's literally as, as big as this porch we're sitting out here on. I mean, it's it's nothing. I mean, and I, I went to it just the other day, and it takes maybe two minutes, you know, and they pay $30. I'm like, I, I'll take two minutes uh, for $30. I'll, I'll do that. But the the – other ones are about seventy bucks. No, I did that wrong. Fifty bucks. Well, it's it's a sliding scale, so it's yeah. not really like I don't. Some people do like a base minimum. They like say, okay, it's it's fifty bucks, and then for every, you know, up to five thousand square feet, and then it's an additional five dollars per thousand square feet after that. I don't mind is a a sliding scale. So at the in the small yards, I might be charging sixteen or seventeen dollars per thousand square feet. You know, so. What that means, a 2,000-square-foot yard is 34 bucks. Well, that's $17 per 1,000. But on a, on a big yard, it's 30,000 square feet, you know. And some people don't agree with this. They think you charge the same no matter what. But on, on a big yard, I may go all the way down to 6 or $7 per 1,000 square feet. You know, but you're saving yourself. You're, you're there the whole time, and so you're, you're not driving, you know. So yeah. it, it, it kind of – there's more than one factor other than just the cost of your chemicals and so your time and all that. So anyway, but I, I'm – I still like small yards, uh, especially ca- our fertilizer costs are going really high um, this That's year. What Payjack was telling me. Yeah, they're through the roof, and um, so, but on the small yards, if I'm getting seventeen dollars per thousand, then then the fertilizer going up is not as big a deal as if I was only getting seven dollars per thousand. Because like I said, if the fertilizer is the same, you know, the cost of the fertilizer. If it's three dollars per thousand, it's three dollars per thousand whether you're charging seventeen or seven. Gotcha. You know, so three out of seventeen, that's not too bad. Three out of seven, it's almost fifty percent. Yeah. Can you walk us through the seven progressions of what you're using for app one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? And for you guys listening, um, Jason's in a pretty much identical market to me. Uh, heavy Bermuda, a little bit of Zoysia. If you look at the map, Atlanta and, and Trustville is you know, we're kind of like at the, I don't yeah. know if that's latitude or longitude, Mr. Producer. My geography is not good when I look at that. Uh, yeah. But we're, we're on the, we're that's on the right. same thing. That's right. East, Climate wise. East, west. Uh, yeah, there you go. North, anyway, we're, we're, uh, we're pretty much level. So, yeah, that's um, the word now, I, I do for. think, um, uh, someone's on the floor above uh, us moving uh, a chair. Uh, okay. I do think that, uh, Atlanta has a, a little bit of a fescue market. Um, they drive me crazy. They're t- eight to ten percent, and and the, those yards are next to impossible. It's ninety two degrees. Yeah, and you're. It, yeah. I, I I gave up on it because it's it's impossible to have fescue in Atlanta. And then the customer gets mad at you. It's yeah. like it's so much stress. So yeah, we there is, but it's it's fading out. Well, we don't have that. Uh, I mean, pretty much at all. So so anyway, um, yeah, we're primarily Bermuda. Then would be Zoysia, then Centipede, and then very little St. Augustine. So so uh, and I on the Centipede and St. Augustine, I only do six apps. But on Bermuda okay. Zoysia, I'm doing seven. And this again was one thing I cleaned up last year. I used to have sort of a separate program for Bermudas that then Zoysia. I mean, it was very similar. But there was a one kink in there, and what the problem was from a business standpoint, if I had a Bermuda yard and a Zoysia yard side by side, I might have to make two trips to that neighborhood, one to do the Bermuda and come back for the Zoysia. Well, I got all that cleaned up. So now when I go to a neighborhood, if it's Bermuda and Zoysia, which most of them are, I do them all the same day. Okay. So, uh, you know, round one, we call them, you call them rounds or application. Right. We call them rounds. So round one is I start like January 2nd through mid uh, February is your pre and post emergent application. So we're Pro-dime. putting out prodiamine. I want to guess. I want to see how. There you I'm go. I'm learning. All right. So what? And then, did you know when you got some post emergence mixing this? So I use a product called Triplet, which is yep. a three way herbicide. And then uh, I put atrazine in there, which so that's going to help with the hen bit and the clover and all your cool season weeds, where the prodiamine's hopefully getting ahead of your crabgrass and warm season weeds. And then. I, I changed some things up because last year was so rainy, we just got killed with weeds. So used used to, in the past, I would come back with round two. would be very similar to round one, another dose of prodiamine. Well, I'm not doing that anymore because I think you, round one is uh, pretty much the one that's going to get ahead of the crabgrass, especially in our area because the crabgrass can start germinating in February sometimes. So you, you really – anyway, so round two, what I'm doing, I'm going out with 100% slow-release fertilizer for round two. 
And you think, well, that's kind of early. You know, I'm on, I'm actually delaying it till about March 1st to start putting it out. But it's still early for Bermuda. A lot of times it's still mostly dormant by then. But this 100% slow-release um, polymer coated stuff, it, it'll just sit there. And when the when the weather starts warming up, it'll start releasing the nutrients. So you can put it out. Or so I'm going to do that. Then come back round three. And I'm going to use um, Spectacle Flow, which is an expensive pre-emergent product that I usually use in the fall. I'm going to start using it in May and okay. trying to get ahead of Dove Weed and Kalinga and some of these other weeds. And then round four, more slow-release fertilizer. Round five is summer weed control. Um, round six is my fall pre- and post-emergent with Spectacle, again, mixed with uh Simazine and 2,4-D, and then round seven in the winter, November, December, we do lime. So that's the program. Fantastic. Jason, we're going to take a quick break here from today's show sponsors. And uh, coming up, I want to hear a little bit more about what's going on in Jason Creole's world. We'll be back with uh, the Lawn Care Life on YouTube, Jason Creole from sunny Siesta Key, Florida. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back with my friend Jason Creole. I may not be saying it right. You with well, a couple of times you just it was real crisp and firm. You kind of drug it out that time. Yeah, that, Jason Krill. Yeah, that's good. Just quick and it's one syllable. Krill. I don't say stuff with one syllable because I'm just a southerner, but you know, so it just sometimes it drags. I confuse people, but uh, you you know what to do. Yes. Well, Jason, I want to give you the opportunity to uh, share your perspective on building a business because. You've done what most guys do. They enter with lawn mowing, and then you've actually done that a couple times, sold those businesses, and you've really found your your financial and life niche here with fertilization weed control, and you seem like you have a – you and Alan Hayne, he's going to be here tomorrow at noon. Okay. Um, But he seems to have a love for the lawn. So kind of walk us through the progression of of why you chose to go this route. And I know – I don't want you to alienate our audience, but most folks listening are are lawn mowing. Yeah. So I just want you to – Kind of present a menu that hey, there's there's other um, niches within the industry yeah. that have way more, you know, upside financially if if you're into doing what you do. Yeah, to, to I, talk into that. To me, I think is is like when you know if you're in high school and you're trying to figure out what am I going to do for a living, and and you think well, somebody wants to go fly fighter jets in the military, and somebody else wants to be an accountant, and you know, it's very different personality. So now. We're, we're all lawn care people, and in the lawn care industry, you're going to have a lot of similarities. But even within that, there are differences. And so you got some people that feel very comfortable marketing themselves, and the idea of going out there getting three, four, five hundred customers is they don't they're not intimidated by that at all. Mm-hmm. You got other people that just want to ride on a lawnmower all day, and they don't want to talk to anybody. And so you know, I, to me, you you have to begin to understand who you are and what do you enjoy because. Yeah, for me, I I did I wasn't too intimidated by getting customers. Not that I'm some outrageous marketer, um, but I, I thought that could happen. And I'm, I guess maybe a little bit of perfectionist. Like I, I really wanted to be able to make the lawn look near perfect, you know. And I couldn't just go mow a weedy yard and just. I mean, that's fine as long as they gave me some money, but. Uh, to it really, irritate you. To, you know, it does. I mean, yeah. it's just like, you you know, it's like the kids eat spaghetti and there's spaghetti still on the floor. You know, it's just like, I, can we, let's clean that up so it looks right, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway. Parenting with Jason yeah, Creel. There you go. Well, I just, uh, so I think you got to get to know yourself. And, and some, if you love mowing, obviously you can do the mowing. I mean, I, if I was talking to somebody about mowing i would try to push them towards you know higher prices and be you know a profitable mowing company uh, too but there's there's not a whole lot of debate in my opinion of of like if one person is going to go out there and this is again goes back to your personality are you are you wanting to be so low and you like kind of micromanaging things like i do for better for worse or are you want to grow something huge and expand and you know hire people um, but if you if you know like I want to be small and I want to kind of be in control, well then a solo spray guy is gonna just about always destroy financially a, a solo mowing guy because solo mowing I mean you you're very you know, I'm not saying it's bad I'm not saying you know but you you're limited um, especially in a lot of areas even where we live and in the, in the south you still can't work year round most of the time and that was one of the huge um, advantages was just. It, 
yes, I was making more per day, but I was making more per day for 12 months out of the year versus nine months out of the year. You know, I didn't have to take a huge pay cut every November through February. So anyway, I, I kind of liked, uh, I, I, I'm not saying I was bored with mowing, but I was ready for a new challenge. And then when I got to do them both side by side, it was just like, okay, this one pays way more than this one. So I'm going to go with this one. So, and part of that was me not maximizing profits in the mowing. So again, I'm not anti-mowing at all. I just, I got Speak, into it and I just Tell us a little it. bit more about that for someone who's like, you know what? I enjoy mowing. I have a friend who just does real mowing. It's a different style yeah. mower that cuts it real short and he loves it. Just, it's a, you know, perfectionist, like, so someone who does do lawn mowing and wants to continue doing lawn mowing, how do you increase those profits? Because as you said, when you were doing lawn mowing, part of the issue was you, you, you were leaving money on the table. Well, I think you know, if we live here in Florida, you know, you can mow year round. That, that's yeah. an advantage. But like where we live, you know, the people that I see have long-term success, even in the South, they're still trying to get a lot of 12 month contracts. Now, whether that be a, uh, commercial property or high-end residential people. I've, I've had high-end residential customers that still wanted you out on their property 51 weeks out of the year, if not 52. Maybe you get Christmas week off, you know, depending. So uh, I think you, you have to continue to, to all about branding yourself as somebody that the, the wealthy people are going to want to hire. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that and then you're able to establish if in these neighborhoods, and I know you've, you've talked about it plenty of times on how you did it and get in there with the people that are willing to pay more and happy to pay more um, for a company that, that has a good reputation. Because the whole, the whole idea of just going out there and just mowing for 50 bucks a yard and 50 bucks a yard, I mean, that is perfectly fine for people that want to do that and make fifty thousand dollars a year and take the whole winter off, or sixty thousand dollars. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But to get over that hurdle, and, and when you start scaling yourself, it's hard to scale a business cutting fifty dollar yards because you're not making enough money to really pay people unless you're doing everything under the table. You know, so and that's the other. You know, advantage of the weed control. If every if every person goes out there and on a daily basis is generating a thousand dollars in revenue, well then you can definitely pay them twenty dollars an hour. You mm -hmm. know, but mowing if you're out there and two of uh, two guys is out there mowing and you made three hundred bucks, you can't pay the guy twenty dollars legally and all your taxes and everything and still make any money. Yeah, I think seven or eight hundred dollars seems to be the cap. For a two-man crew, I've talked to a lot of people, and I, you know, what, what are you guys making per day? And it's like, if everything's aligned and going well, and they're crushing it, and there's no breakdowns, and everything's a smooth day, it's almost like 800 is like you kind of cap out there just because of t time. Yeah. Um, and that's perfect. That's two-man. But you're saying with one person, you, you can go out and do 20, 25 sprays in a day and actually gross a thousand. Yeah, that, and that, that's, one, that's I one. mean, that's not like me being Superman. People make over a thousand consistently every day. I mean, just normal text. That's you know, and again, it's no legally. This is no guarantee of your future income. Let me go ahead and say that. But <laughs> but I'm saying consistently, lawn care people out spraying yards and making a thousand. But and then I, I had somebody ask me this. It's like, well, well, why? Why doesn't more people do that? And and it, it is a little intimidating and thing. And it's not overnight. You got to have hundreds of customers to really make it. But um, they, he said, did they not just not know? I mean, did the, does the mowing guy not know that the spraying guy's making way more money? And and I think in some, I think I was like, when I was mowing, I, I was like, yeah, I don't think I knew. I said that guy came wow. and sprayed the yard. I said, I did, I knew it took him like ten minutes and it took me an hour, but I didn't think in my mind he's making more in ten minutes than I am in an hour. Wow. So good. And you've really helped my friend Felipe Saldana. He's over in Atlanta, Omega Lawn Care. He tracked with you on YouTube, and he was a mow, lawn mower. didn't do it. A lot of times when you mow, then they're going to ask you to do the mulch, flowers, and, and you, that's where you can really make some money. But he was doing all of it and then started listening to you on YouTube. He's like, you know what? Let's niche down to this. So him and his wife changed things up, and, and now uh, they're only Furt and Squirt. Okay. I met Felipe. I, I'm pretty yeah, sure I met Yeah, him and his wife, guy. Hannah, yeah. 
So anyway, you, what you're doing on YouTube is important. So well, that's let, good to let hear. people know how they can connect you. You're you're uh, spicing things up over there on YouTube, huh? Yeah, I, well, that's what yeah. you told me. Well, I did, I've had a few uh, videos. They're a little little off topic lately, and just see how they go. They're lawn care related, but anyway, some Not. better reviews than others. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I'm on uh, YouTube. Lawn Care Life is my. That's primarily where I put out new content. And then on my website, LawnCareLife.com, is where I have resources, which are also available on the Green Industry Podcast.com. Yes, we got we got you featured over there. So, well, I appreciate it, Jason. I'll I'll, I'll act my manners here and let you unpack your suitcase. The aggressive podcaster. I I, I should have uh, been more thoughtful, but. Hey, we're wearing the same shirt. I figure let's let's squeeze one in, man. Let's do it. I need to get in get in the mood. So I'm happy to happy to be here. And thanks for having me on. Yeah, and thanks again, Brian and and Liz and Caleb and Brittany for uh, giving us the time and space. Such a beautiful home here, and, and to our friends at Xmark and Company Cam Kohler Engines for sponsoring this kickoff tour. I sure appreciate it. And uh, thanks, Jason, for being on the show. Smash that follow button. Hope you'll catch us on the next episode.